Boom, we're on. And this week's episode is brought to you by Platinum Wave Campers, the UK's leading stockist of luxury Volkswagen camper vans. With locations up and down the country, Platinum Wave Campers are on hand to bring your vision to life. So whether you are looking to start working on a custom built project or find your dream Volkswagen Transporter, this is a place to look. Ever dreamed of owning your own Volkswagen camper van? Well now's your chance as you can save £500 by using the code JAMES500. All you have to do is speak to one of the friendly sales team and say that James English sent you there. Now, let's get into the episode. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got actor Josh Myers. What's going on, my brother? Joshy boy. Ah. <laughs> How are you? I'm not nervous. Are you a little bit? Yeah, a little bit nervous, to be fair, yeah. Why? Just because I know you're going to get a lot out of me, probably. And um, yeah, I'm just just nervous. Obviously, um, to be fair, I'm a big fan of your work and seeing all your podcasts and what you do. So yeah, let's see what happens, eh? Good to have you on the show, brother. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we'll touch on it. Like we've just signed up for an MMA fight, a celeb yeah. MMA fight. I know people are going to go, "Well, where's the real celeb?" Blah blah blah. But yeah. it's an opportunity for both of us. Yeah, we've never had an MMA fight. It's never. a challenge. Celeb MMA. It's going to be a good thing. It's twenty fourth of June, is it? Yeah, twenty fourth of June at uh, OVO Wembley Arena. Yeah. Eleven thousand people. That. Yeah, something like that. It's going to be crazy. Opportunities, mate, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be brilliant, man. Yeah. I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to it. It's just. I've never fought in a cage before, but this is, you know, this is going to be great because, you know, I'm sure we'll touch base on this, but it's just, I'm back training solid again. You know, we're training together on the same mm -hmm. team, which is uh, oh, man. absolutely yeah. love. Um, and yeah, so we've got 11 weeks training and then on the 12th week, we've got our fight. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. It's going to be good. Game time. You've been in a few films, Rise of the Foot Soldiers. You've been in two, what, two or three. You've worked with Tom Hardy. Yeah. You've worked with some of the greatest actors on this planet. Like, it's yeah. a phenomenal achievement. I know you've battled with mental health as well, and yeah. which we'll touch on. But I always go back to the start of my guests, where you grew up and how it all began. So I grew up um, in uh, I grew up in Edgware. Um, that's uh, it's Basically, yeah, grew up there since I was a kid. Um, born and bred, Edgware boy, uh, North London. Um, and and yeah, and uh, where where I grew up, uh, I went I went to school, uh, primary school. Went to a school called Broadfields. I was a little I was a little shit really. Um, I went there to obviously year six and then finished that. Went to uh, secondary school, Mill County. But the whole time I. You know, touching back on the on the acting side, I, I wanted to do acting the whole way through because my family were in the film industry. My, my dad's quite a well-known film distributor and my grandpa was uh, big in the game when I was younger. So growing up, I was always seeing them uh, on film sets and doing big films. And there's something I want to touch on uh, with you soon, which I don't think you know about, um, which is uh, my grandfather, God bless his soul. I miss him. He, was, he, he, he would be proud of me where I am now. Bless him. But um, my, the Halloween films, I don't know if you've seen them, the guy with the white mask. Mm -hmm. Jason? Could, no, might see. Michael Myers. Yeah. Yeah, that was named after my granddad. What was that? I, I swear on my life. Why? So was my- Was he a serial killer, was he? No, nah, he wasn't. Uh, as far as I know, well, my <laughs> unless my grandma was keeping a mental secret <laughs> from me. Uh, no. You have got the traits of a Morris bro, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, shut up, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, so basically my um when I was growing up, my uh um, I was always interested in being an actor, you know, cuz from a young age, you know like when you get like you go you go off on school on like summer holidays, Easter holidays, blah yeah. blah blah. And I would sometimes go to work with my dad, my grandpa when he was alive. Um you know, being as young as 10, 11 years old, I was visiting visiting film sets. And um yeah, and I, and I remember this story popped up where basically 
uh, I found out a long time ago, before I was born, my grandpa owned, uh, my dad's dad owned uh, a lot of cinemas throughout the UK. <laughs> he had a company called First Independent Films. And he helped, if I'm correct in saying this, he helped John Carpenter, the writer and director of the original Halloween films, a big success. So he basically um, acquired the rights or, or distributed the original Assault on Precinct 13 film in the UK um, because it bombed in America and made John Carpenter a big success and people in America, I believe, um, started to take notice of him. Anyway, Colin Sweet, quite short, um, his next project was the Halloween Projects. And um, John Carpenter actually says, if it wasn't for my grandpa, he'd be working in some hotel somewhere sweeping up. So out of respect to pay homage, homage, homage to my homage, homage, to my, homage no, yeah, and it was one of them, uh, to my grandfather called the killer in his Halloween films after him. So that's why the killer is called Michael Myers. After your granddad? After my granddad, yeah. That's fucking nuts, isn't it? Mental, isn't it? Yeah. No, not, not many people know that, but. We do now. You do now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a serial killer, by the way. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I've, got, I've got his traits, trust me. Uh, is, uh, so when you say you're a lot of shit, shit at school, in yeah. what way? Just, uh, I just, I never used to listen to teachers. I'd always act out. I, I was just, I was just a little fucker, man. I, I, I wasn't a good, I wasn't, I listen, I had amazing, I had, I had an amazing upbringing, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't a good kid. I always acted out. Um, I always wanted to be the centre of attention in in, in school. It, anywhere I went, I, it was always like, no, "Look at me, look at me." And I don't, no, don't worry about them. Look at me. I, I'm the centre of attention. Look at me. But obviously, that didn't really work out in schools because I'd always be the class clown, getting chucked out of classes, getting detentions after school, just being trouble. You know, putting my parents through so much shit, like so much shit. Being a young kid. Um, I had therapy at a young age, since the age of like, I'm honestly going back to probably 12 or 13, I probably started therapy. Why? I just had a lot of demons in my head. I was scared. What, one thing I will remember is I, I, when I was, I, I couldn't, I didn't want to go to sleep. I don't know what come over me. I just didn't want to go to sleep at night because I was scared of death. And I used to be scared of that. But what if I wake up and my mum's gone and I didn't say goodbye to her? So I'd always used to go up to her bed at night and give her a kiss to my dad. So I love you, just in case I don't see you tomorrow. And they'd be like, what are you talking about? Go out to bed. You know, you know, give us a, give us a cuddle. My family, a very loving family. So you know, I love my mum, I love my dad to bits. Um, but yeah, I was just, I, I couldn't get over that death. I was so frightened of going to sleep and never waking up. Um, so yeah, I, I, I went to see someone. Um, I, that's as far back as I remember why why I first started to go and see a therapist well, was um, was because of that. What was it like at that age going and, going to see a, a therapist, especially being at school and did your friends or anything? No, nah. I was probably, I was probably at that age probably too embarrassed to uh, to tell people. I'd, I, I as long as I, as far back as I can remember, I'd, I kept that quiet. And I remember you know even having not special like teacher well I did actually from primary school to into secondary school I used to get teachers who would not follow me around but you'd have like a you'd have the teacher who teach a class and a substitute teacher and that substitute teacher would mainly sit next to me because I couldn't help myself I'd always want to act out and shout out and I remember my mum telling me from a young kid when I was in primary school you know, you're being like year three or four, you know, obviously you finish year six and go into secondary school, year seven. But they'll 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 say, Oh, Josh is just, you know, turn to page four. No, I'm not doing that. I want to do page six. No, we're doing page no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing what I want. And I and they're just like, well then get out, go and see the headmaster, parents get called. And this was every week. Every week I was getting told off because I would act out. You know, my dad's at work, working his ass off to provide for us in London, doing his film stuff. And, you know, my mum would have to stop what she's doing in a day, thinking we're at school, got time to do what she wants, to stop her day, come into school, pick me up, because I've been chucked out of school again. So I was, I, 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 I didn't ruin their lives, but I was a little shit, man. Yeah, difficult kid. Definitely a difficult kid. When you say you didn't want to go to sleep, how long, what's the longest you stayed up for? 
I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it sounds pathetic, but being a kid, you try and stay up all night, but you just end up falling asleep. Yeah. I reckon at least a couple of times I, I would go throughout the whole week. I, every night I got put to bed to go to bed. There'd be an argument. I'm not going to bed. And you're like, my mum's like, you're, you're 10. Like, you're going to bed. Right, it's 10, 11 o'clock. It's too late getting to bed. Oh, right, I'm putting the TV on. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Well, we'll take the TV out of your room. Do it then. I was, I was, I was horrible to them when I was a kid. Did you ever hallucinate or anything when you were younger? That like, when trying to force yourself to not sleep? Not that I, not, not that I remember, but I definitely were times where I'd like, I'd like, you know, be falling asleep and I'd fight going to sleep. I used to sneak downstairs um, and you know, I'd, I'd, I'd go and eat something. I'd go to the fridge and start eating chocolate to have sugar to stay awake. Um, just, I just, because I didn't know when you're young, you don't really know about you can potentially get a sugar rush and that might keep you up or whatever. But I remember hearing your parents say when you were a young kid, no, you're not having that now. You're, you're, you're too much, you've eaten too much sugar. You've eaten too much, you bounce off the walls. So I thought, oh, all right, well, if I take that, I won't sleep. So I'd eat throughout the night, and then next minute I know I've, I've kind of passed out, woken up, and an hour later I've got to get ready for school. And I was fucked because I've got to go to school. And then I'd act up because I'm tired, I'm cranky, I haven't slept, I'm arguing with uh, uh, um, teachers. Um, I'm not necessarily arguing with the other kids, but I'm just being the class clown again, getting chucked out. I mean, this was like an every other day occurrence. There wasn't really a day in primary school that, that I was a really like good kid. Mm -hmm. I, it was always like they'd have board meetings about me. Like, what? How are we going to deal with Josh? Because I didn't want to go to school. I hated school. I wanted to stay at home with my mum and my mum. My dad was obviously in town, always working, doing his film stuff. I wanted to be with my mum because I was always scared that something might happen to her. I might never see her again. I was scared of death. I had all these things going on in my head that just affected me mentally. And that's why my mum was like, I think we need to take you to see a therapist. Um, and that's why I started going to a therapist. Did it help? Yeah, it did for me. It was unloading. Um, and, and I think unloading on uh, uh, um, talking about it when I was younger was was really obviously really helped me. They taught me breathing techniques, um, just how to deal with going to sleep at night. Um, and yeah, it did help, to be fair, yeah. What's the root of that? Did they get to the the, the problem? Did they? Uh, do you know what? It was like I said. I haven't I haven't spoke about this to anybody. What I'm telling you right now, nobody knows this about the death thing. So I can't really remember what what it was. But I I, I definitely remember just not wanting to go to sleep because I was scared I was going to die in my sleep. Maybe it was stuff I saw on the news. Maybe it was stuff I heard, and I didn't clock it. I, I I never I never really got to the root of it, but they helped me to say, look, you're a young kid, you've got a good heart, you're going to be okay, you know. But, you know, I'd stay in my mum. I, I, I would wake up in the middle of the night and go up to my mum's room and just lie in the bed with her. Up, up to the age of, like, you know, probably 13, you know, like, and I would never tell my friends that. You know, if obviously when you're 11, 12 years old, no one goes, oh, did you have a good sleep last night? I don't give a shit. But I know I did because I slept next to my mum and my dad. Do you feel safer? Yeah, much safer. Knowing I'm next to my mum and my dad, 100%. Yeah, it's sad that people get anxiety and, and overthink that way where they mm -hmm. are scared and fearful of life. Or, but at least you had a support mum and dad there. Yeah, thank God. I, yeah, thank God I did because there's unfortunately a lot of people, you know, a lot of people out there don't have mums or dads, and yeah. I'm very lucky that I did. And I had a, I, you know, they, I did have an amazing upbringing, but I just had a lot of shit in my head that I had to deal with at a young, from a young age, and I don't know why. What did you do after school? Secondary school. Yeah. After secondary school, um, I, which I just finished, because they wanted to chuck me out of that as well. Um, so I got to year ten. Uh, I mean, listen, when I got to year seven in secondary school, my first year. With an hour, I never forget this. Within an hour of being in secondary school, I got a detention, a Saturday detention. Not even just an hour after school. I was so naughty, and I was in the involved in a fight. I wasn't a bully because I was never a bully, and I saw someone bullying a kid, and I just went for him because I don't like bullies. I never have, never will. Um, 
and I got sat at detention where at that school I went to, you have to go in your uniform on a Saturday to school and do an hour of maths, hour of English, hour of science. Did I turn up? <clears throat> Did I fuck? In year seven, already showed I'm a cunt. And my mum, you know, my mum would drop me at the gates. I walk down. She turns around. I walk straight back up. Go and have a smoke. Go to meet my mates in my uniform. Josh didn't turn up. Where is he? And at that age, I don't know if I had a mobile. So I just go home when I want. Knowing that, shit, when I go home, I'm pff, fucking hell, I'm in trouble. Because I, obviously I know when I get home, the schools have called them to say, is, where's Josh? Is he right? He hasn't turned up. My mum's like, I've dropped him at the gate. So that was mad. But yeah, so basically uh, when I did finally finish school, because I got to year 10, I don't know how I got to the year 10. And the last year was year 11. But when I got to year 10, the last month of year 10, I remember the headmaster pulling me out of my class. He said, Josh, can we come and speak to you? I said, yeah, all right, sweet, whatever. And I went into his room and it was him, my mum, my dad, four or five other teachers. And I remember them sitting me down. They're like, look, Josh, these are, your head, these are the head of each. Like, that's the head of maths, that's the head of science, blah, blah, blah. Head of, but the one thing for me that I, I excelled in and I loved because I could express myself was drama. I was never naughty in drama class. Never, not once. I listened and I learned because that's what I wanted to be. I knew I wanted to be an actor. I hated school shit. I didn't want to learn maths because I can't do it. I still can't do maths. I don't want to learn science. What am I going to do? I ain't going to be a scientist, am I? I don't want to learn geography. I'm not going to do something with geography. So I just wanted to be a drama student. I just like, If I could have done that full time every day, I would have been happy as now, but obviously that's not the way of the world. But he pulled me in, I cut my story short, he basically said, look, we've wanted to expel you so many times. Like, as in, get the fuck out of our school and do not come back. You're not good for our school. You walk walking with uniform, smoking in the, in the fucking corridors, you know. But she, they, the headmaster, Dr. Davison, I remember at the time, he said, the only reason you're here is because you're a lovely mum begging us to not expel you. Because if they expel you, if we expel you, you've won. You've got what you wanted. I said, yeah, that's right. I don't want to come to school. I hate school. So we haven't. But we've brought your mum and dad in today and you in our class to tell you this. If you get X amount of hours or Saturday detentions in year 11, the next year you're going into, when you've got to do your GCSEs, right? You're expelled. Sorry, Lindsay. Sorry, Martin. It's mum and dad. We won't do it anymore. You're gone. You won't do year 12, um, sixth form, you know, like upper six, whatever, and you're gone out of the school. You're flunk, whatever. We just, we, it is what it is. So, okay. You won't be, you won't be doing the drama school. My dad said, Forget drama school, gone, done. If you don't buck your ideas up in this year, next year, when you come back, my dad said to me, I will not pay for your drama school lessons. And I was just like, oh, wow, okay. Wow, this is really happening. Do you know any detentions I got in year 11? What? Zero? Not one. I was a model student in year 11. I don't know what the fuck happened to me. What is it, a cry out for help or the fact that, were you ever diagnosed with anything? Um, I wasn't saying, I, 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 no, I, I've got ADHD now and fucking no, Asperger's no, and all no, that shit now. No, I wasn't actually diagnosed with anything. I was just a naughty kid and I just acted out. If I didn't want to do something in class, I wouldn't do it. If I knew the answer for something, I, put my, I wouldn't even put my hand out, I'd shout it out. And everyone in the class is going, oh, I know sir, I know miss. Fuck off, I'd, I know the answer, I'm shouting out. Why that, do you think you love drama so much? Because oh, I, I can express myself. and I Without just, being judged? Without being judged, yeah. I can do anything. I can act like anyone. And it's an act, like, like I do now. I can act that person, this person, that person. I can act like a woman if I really want. Why do the majority of the time anyway, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Um, yeah, so... Um, Yes, yeah, so that was that, and then went, but that really hit me when my dad said that. Like, I went to Sylvia Young Drama School um, uh, um, every weekend, and my dad was like, "That's gone. I'm telling you now, that's gone. I'm not paying for it no more." 
And I was like, oh, no, because I loved it there. Made such good friends. And that, for me, was going to a drama school where I'm just acting, improvisation, doing script work, learning how to um, work, in, learn, work myself in front of a camera in an audition situation. I was learning stuff that I needed to get to where I am today. Um, so, yeah, year 11, I was, I was even so good that halfway through the year, I think six, seven months into the year, we was having an assembly about something and they pulled me up on stage to the other kids in year 10 talking about me saying if Josh can do it you can all do it well done Josh I was like oh, fuck off Thanks how did that make you feel? it's not made me feel good man <laughs> I did feel good mm -hmm. it did make me feel good it was crazy though Were you ever bullied or anything? no nah, I was I was very lucky I was never bullied mm -hmm. I, I, I was um I think I was never bullied in the school because my old, my brother was older. He was three years older than me. I mean, my brother's not, I mean, a, a tough boy, but he he had all his friends and the, some of them were tough. So I was, no, I was never bullied. But I think it's because I was the funny kid and the class count. And gro and I was always quite a big, not physically big and strong, but I was quite tall at a young age. And I just wouldn't take shit. If someone wants to start on me, I, I, mm -hmm. I would start back at a, at a kid. And I hated bullies. They were a big thing for me. So what did you do after school? So after school, um, I didn't know what to do. I really didn't know what I was going to do, obviously, because I was like, I, I just want to be an actor. And my dad was like, well, you know, we, we can help you get an agent, you can doing your drama classes. But one thing that my dad said to me was that you need to have something to, pardon me, that you need to have something to fall back on. So I did a personal training course because I loved working out, gymming, and I became a personal trainer for about a year, two years, something like that. And then I got bored of that. I, got, I get bored so quickly, like so quickly, James. Like if I, but the thing is with me, I don't listen to people. My dad was like, get a job in a gym, stable, getting money. You're only 17, 18. Nope, I, I want to do personal one-to-one. -one. Yeah, but that takes years, Josh. You got to build up your clientele. You could do one or two a week. What's that? Hundred quid a week, if that. You need to have proper money coming in. I never, I never listened, did I? I should have, but I never listened. Um, and then as a year went by, I had like probably the most, honestly, it was shit. Three, four people a week. I was lazy, but for me, uh, that's not good money. Thirty pound an hour. I was charging. I had three or four a week, but they were constant. Um, and then I remember. And then after I did personal training, I was always good with my hands. I did a barbering course. I became a barber. But you didn't know that. Who was that? It's good. I still cut hair now sometimes. You cut mean, bro? Easy peasy. Yeah, you definitely think so. Don't don't like a yeti. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but. <laughs> uh, so you've done acting, you've done the barbering course. What was that? Did you get any jobs acting? Um, for. Uh, the first job I ever got was, um, I think, I can't remember, it was a, I did a film called Psychosis uh, with a woman from Buffy the Vampire Slayer called Charisma Carpenter, I think that was her name. Um, it was called Psychosis, and um, I must have been 17, 18 years old. Very small role at the beginning, um, and then I get killed. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in it for about, all in all, screen time three, four minutes, four or five minutes, but it was learning the ropes. It ha you got to start somewhere. What was that like for you doing your first job? It was fucking scary. I'll tell you why. Because my first ever scene in the film, this guy jumps up, bites me in the neck. I had to wear prosthetics on my neck, which was like, wow, what's this? This is so cool. Like, I've never done anything like this before. He jumps, bites me in my neck. You ever see American Werewolf in London? Yeah. Right, so the bit where he gets attacked on the moors. And how he screams and like he, like he's being bitten to fuck, you know what I mean? And I remember the director, Red Travis, said to me, um, watch that film. I said, all right. He said, see how that guy reacts to the, wolf, the werewolf attacking him and how he's screaming. That's how you should scream. You're not going to get bit in the neck and go, ah, oh, fucking hell, yeah. Uh, because the guy's... So, uh, the script was basically this lunatic geezer who was just fucking crazy and going around killing people. And I'm walking through the woods, I'm doing a piss, and he jumps on my neck, rips my neck out, and I'm like dying on the thing. 
And that was my first fucking scene. It was just freezing cold. It was snowing. There's like 40, 50 people behind the camera. I absolutely shat myself. But I thought, I've got to do this because this is what I want to do in life. And the director was like, are you ready, Josh? Are you ready? You're pumped up. And I was like, yeah. I, I was shaking. No, number one, because it was cold out. Um, like, really cold. Couldn't feel my feet. So I had a lot going on up there mentally as well. Um, two takes, I've done it. And even the makeup people turned around and went, I actually thought you was getting killed. I thought like he'd bit, really bitten your neck. I said, really? They said, yeah. I said, watch the playback. Oh, I can't tell you how like, proud of myself I was. I was like, wow. I, and the director was like, mate, everyone give me a hand of applause. He said, just fucking do it. Just go for it. What's the worst that's going to happen? I say, can't do it again. But don't make me do it 20 times. He said, just go for it, Josh. Fucking when I say action, he's just bit your neck. Go. And I did it. It was the best feeling in the world. And what's... Because you've done nearly 30 films, like, yeah. how? Because acting's a hard gig to, to do, especially in the UK. Like, yeah, there's not many big actors go to Hollywood and, and, and absolutely smash I, Listen, I might not ever get to that stage, you but... You can't think like that, man. Anything is possible. Yeah. I, look, I'm, I'm happy how I'm still... Elevating. Elevating, you know what I mean? Um, I've got I've got a few fingers fingers in a few pies and fingers mm. crossed, a few things lined up, which I can't really mention at the moment. But if it happens, it'd be great. If it don't, it don't. You've got to be, you've got to be ready for setbacks because mm. you get a lot of them in this world, in, in the acting game. So when you started, what's the progression then after that? You get that part, a couple of minutes. That, what happens after that? You keep chasing your dream to try and open other doors? Or? Yeah, of course. It's all about, in the film world, it's all about networking. You've got to network. You got to meet people so that you're you might keep in contact with that director, go and meet him for lunch, and he'll introduce the producer who's working another film, and that it just that's how it goes around. You know what I mean? Um, but I suppose what you got to have a show reel. You got to make a great show reel. So uh, when when you when you're younger and you 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 want a big agent, you or you want a good agent, unless you're like the bollocks and you've come out of theatre school, you come out of like RADA or something like that and someone's coming to watch your theatre show and gone, wow, he is amazing. Yeah, you might need a show reel, I don't really know how that works but you might not. If, you just come out, if you've just come out of a full-time drama school, you get producers, agents, casting directors coming to watch you and they take you on their books and then you, they get you work and producers and, and directors go on their word. You know, if a big agent says, my client can do that audition. He's fucking the nuts. I've watched him in a play. Give him a go. They go, okay, great. Oh, I've got someone called Josh Myers, 18 years old, just on his first film. Oh, brilliant. What's he like? Um, yeah, I think he's good. Can you send me any of his stuff? No, I haven't got anything. Mm -hmm. do not really work, does it? What was your first film? That psychosis film. Yeah, after that. Oh, God. What did I do after that? I think I, I think it was a film called Screwed, which the same director who directed Psychosis put me in. And that was with um, James Darcy, who's quite a big English actor. Um, and that was basically about... Um, I played a Greek um, prisoner called Panos and I only had in that one a bit more screen time probably about 10 minutes throughout the whole film and then that's the last you see me but that was quite difficult actually because um, in in the film I wake up to my cellmate who's hung himself and that was fucking mental because they said you need to react like because basically what, what the scene was is that Lights are out, everyone's asleep in the, all the prisoners and the cells, whatever. And this character that James Darcy plays is like the main uh, officer walking down the landing, and he um, he basically sees into my into the hole in the door. And he sees my cell hang himself, and he's the keys and stuff. I was obviously startled me, and they said, and then they filmed me and my reactions, and I was fucking like turned around. I was like, what the? Because it looks so fucking real, and the makeup of him looking blue, the lips mm -hmm. and all that. That was that was a bit weird. That was fucking dark, man. See, when you see those scenes, like, can it have an effect on you after? Even though you know it's acting and it's fake, but 
does it still play out? Because you look at the method actors and that who go deep, Daniel Day Lewis, yeah. stuff like that. Oh, like, I love Daniel Day They go the proper best. deep. Like, how can I, does it ever affect you mentally when seeing shit like that? Um, I don't think that affected me mentally, but what did affect me a little bit was one of the, the guy, one of the guys who wrote the film, Ronnie Thompson, who used to be a prison officer. Um, he, after I came out, I just wanted, I, I loved a bit of, not praise, but I loved a bit of like, <laughs> you shouldn't really do it, but you know, you go up to the director and say, was that good? Was that all right? Because I was so excited to be on a film set and yeah. I loved it. Um, and to just basically, was it all right? And he's like, yeah, brilliant, Josh. Well done. I'll tell you if it wasn't, I'll make you do it again. And I was like, okay, I want to talk to Ronnie because it, this is his life. This really happened to him. And I remember looking for him and he was just, you know, like that little bit further down from where we were filming on the film. It was all a set. It wasn't that, it wasn't actually in a, it, what the, they filmed in a prison, but just that particular scene was all built set, looked like a looked like a cell. So they get the cameras in, wherever. And he walked off crying. He was like, just watching your reactions on the monitor killed me because that's happened to me. I've walked in there and seeing a cellmate who's alive, watching his cellmate, who he thinks asleep in the bed next to him, hung and it just brought back so many memories so that for me i was like oh fuck i've now caused this guy to have flashbacks to make him see what he's seen again mm -hmm. so that effect not affected me but upset me definitely in your 20s how did you deal with the no sleeping thing and the kind of seeing the psychologist and kind of being rebellious like were you still <laughs> battling in your 20s as much as you were in your teens N Definitely not, no. It, um, in, in my 20s, I was still seeing therapists, then not seeing therapists, but it's because I because I was so stupid. I don't know if that's the right word, but I would I would basically say, oh, I don't need to see a therapist anymore, I'm sweet. My, and my mum would all... It's still to this day my mum says it. You're not, though. What are you talking about? Like, like generally now how I am right now, I don't see therapists. I haven't seen a therapist about four or five years. You know, I'm 35, so the last time I saw a therapist was probably when I was about 30. Why did you stop? I just felt I didn't need to go anymore. But I, I still, but like I said, I, I still to this day suffer with depression and mental health issues. I, like, you know, I take pills for my depression. Um, I get down, very down, but, in, but like go back to in, in my 20s, um, yeah, I, I, I've, I just, I've had depression since I can remember. James, uh, but I, I used to hide it well, and you know, in, I don't. Do you know what's sad? I don't really remember. I remember my twenty-first birthday because my dad took me to Vegas. I remember that, but after that, I don't really remember much because it's always drinking, doing drugs, going out, three, four day benders, um, just being an absolute twat, really. Um, so yeah. Sad, but yeah. what's a bad day like for Josh? Like when your depression hits the hardest, don't want to get out of bed, don't want to look at my phone, <clears throat> don't want to talk to anybody, want to stay in a dark room. I think about drinking, I think about taking drugs. Um, luck, thank god I don't, uh, because that would destroy me mentally and physically. Um, I sometimes think about what would it be like if I wasn't here? What if I killed myself? You know, I I, I do I get really dark moments in my head. And then I'm and then then the next day or so, I'm like, what the fuck was all that about? I'm on these pills to help. They do help. Because if I, I, I think sometimes if I wasn't on them, how what would I be like? But that's a dark day. That's my darkest days. I, I think about probably, you know, doing something stupid. I'd never go through with it because I'm too scared of death. Did you ever try back in the day? I think I think I, I did not necessarily try, but I definitely took too much of of uh, of cocaine one night in, in two nights. And I remember my heart beating so fast that I thought I was going to die. I thought I'm going to die and that's what scared me more because it brought back memories of me being scared of death. And then I thought, shit, if I die tonight, my mum's what, what's my mum and dad going to think? They're going to lose their son. It's fucked. 
It's crazy to think that you were scared of death, but yet snorting your pan in, drinking, mm. doing all that stuff to then push yourself towards death. Yeah. You think you would do the opposite and try and get fitter, get healthier, eat cleaner, yeah. to try and protect yourself from not passing away. Yeah. Like, it's a sense of self-harming, isn't it? Like, if you're yeah. feeling sad or depressed, like, the best thing you do is escape. How do you escape? You do bad things. Mm. You take drugs or you drink or you smoke weed or whatever it is you like yeah. to do to take you away from the pain of reality. And that's the sad thing about life, that there's so many people struggle. I get messages every single day on all platforms and I can't reply to them all now because there's just so many, but I'll reply sure. to some. And, and just that simple message can pick up somebody's day. And it's... Yeah. I ain't a doctor, but I'm just learning from my fuck-ups, my pain, my mistakes, and me trying to run away from the problems because you, you're not running, you're not even running away from the problems because they're still there. They don't ever leave you unless you face them. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. Uh, I, you know, think, thinking about now all the stupid shit that I've done in my past, you know, it's just absolutely ridiculous. You know, drink the drinking, going out, doing the drugs, like you, you look back at yourself now and think, well, why, why was I doing that? Rebelling at school, not being a good kid. I mean, the worst thing for me, which upsets me still to this day, is upsetting my mum and my dad. So, yeah, that was, that was hard. Because they've always been there for you and never left your side. Mm. But why do you think that we do that? Why do you think it is that the ones who do care for us is the ones we destroy the most? Don't know. Don't know. But have the you, fact, you know, upsetting my mum was the worst thing for me. Have you ever had that discussion with her? Yeah. How did it go? It was hard, man. Bastard got me crying. I knew you'd get me crying. <laughs> um, it was hard because she, you know, because my mum started seeing a therapist because of me. So that 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 was hard. That was really hard to know that. Because she never used to tell me. I only found out about three, four years ago. She said, you know when I used to go out and do whatever, blah, blah. She said, you know, I used to see a therapist because of you. Because I had dark days as well. But it was all because of you. I said, what? I made you feel like that. Knowing how I felt. And I'm putting my, my like, the love, like, I can't tell you the love I've got for my mum. And my dad, but my mum and me got that, just a little bit of special bond. Um, that destroyed me, James. It destroys me now. Yeah, because your mum will probably partly take blame. That maybe she may be thought she'd raised you wrong or told you different things. That Because you'll be, if you're that extra special bond with your mum, you're probably like your mum in so many ways. Yeah. Both of you going to see a therapist, both of you battling that. It can it can rub on like from us, or maybe your mum was battling, and you've you've because you've had that so clo close a bond that you've you've not mimicked her, but you've took the vibes from her possibly, which is both he's struggling both mentally, and you've went down that road, and she's went down that road. But again, mm. it's part of how she maybe blamed herself at times, um, because all we want to do is protect our kids, show them right from, from wrong, make yeah. the right decisions, and it must be hard if a kid's rebelling, and there's nothing you can do. Because it must put all the stresses in the pain. Because even back when back in Glasgow, my mum's dad, mum and dad's door used to get in nearly every week with the coppers looking really? for me. Do you know what I mean? And all the stresses and the pain that like, he put them through. Because when my dad got diagnosed with leukemia, part of me blamed myself for the stresses that I was putting him under mm. because he was so worried about me. Do you know what I mean? The kid in prison and fucking doing what I was doing. and Because you do blame yourself, but part of you needs to let go of that as well, Josh. Yeah. Because it's fucking done. Like you weren't yeah. the same person yesterday as you were 10, 20 years ago. That like yeah. you're still learning today, you're still doing well for yourself. You're a very loving character, even in the camp. That like you're always happy. But again, that can be an act as well. But of course, of course. But I, I, I generally am like when I get up in the mornings, I'm 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 very happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, look, after this, I might go home thinking about shit, all the things that I brought up, which but you know, this needs to happen for me, you know, because I don't really talk about this with anyone. I don't just sit around and talk about what I, um, I used to get up to because it's just I don't like, pardon me, I don't like negative energy, I don't like talking about negative stuff, but obviously I wanted to open up to you today because, yeah. you know, and I've got so much time for you, man, I feel like you're my brother. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I've only yeah, known. Brothers. Um, but yeah, no, that, that, that destroyed me, 
that you know that it still does um you know that my mum used to say you make me sick not like phys like you make me sick like physically ill like you're causing me to be ill like i can't go a day without worrying about it. like we, i've got a brother jamie and a sister jody great kids i love my brother i love my sister very close to them but me i was a shit cunt i used to cause murders i was cause i, I was terrible fighting all the time with them for no apparent reason starting shit i was not a good kid but i was brought up amazingly and my mum used to say i couldn't go out when you're at school most mums back then or like that they're that you know i was very lucky that my dad done very well for himself still does well for himself that my mum didn't need to work but she's like i could be out at lunch i couldn't eat and my friends would go why aren't you eating I'm just, I'm just worried I'm going to get a phone call and I'm going to have to leave and go pick up Josh. And she said, nine times out of ten, it would happen. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Myers, can you come pick up Josh from school? We, we don't want him here today, he's got to go. Always on edge. But again, you were always a warrior. Your mum's a warrior as well. Maybe one's in the family. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's probably a lot more. He's a probably a lot more alike than she ever thinks. Yeah, 100%. Maybe she does think but that way, but both similarities... Yeah. In many ways, in many ways, man. Yeah. Three, we've no. been just speaking to for the last forty minutes. That it's kind of <clears throat> that's what I pick up. But again, I ain't a fucking therapist or a doctor, but I pick up vibes. And yeah. again, but she'll be proud of you. What you're doing now, fuck's sake, you're only thirty five. Like yeah. you're doing great things. You were in great films. Like they'll, tr they'll be proud in so many ways. Yeah, like that's the beautiful thing about no, it. I, I know, I know. I'm... Make amends. We can always make them feel better. We can mm. always put that smile in their face. Yeah, that, that's the beautiful thing about life, man. That like, you can change, and I fucking repeat this stuff religiously because I yeah. might have a new listener, or I might have somebody that's watched many times and listened to it enough to start believing that you can make changes. Like, yeah, because we spoke about med medication, like, was it 40 milligrams or something you're on? Yeah, uh, yeah, and you've been on that for eight years, about eight years, yeah, eight, like, eight to ten, maybe. Yeah, so that is a lot of time, and you've been speaking recently, though, since we've started this, you're going to start weaning yourself off them and, and yeah. trying to. Definitely, I think, because yeah. I think, like you said, you know, off camera, that it might be a placebo effect now. But I, I always thought, you know, take, you know, if it's going to help me feel good in the day, then why would I stop them? You know, but I think, because I'm back in the track, I just get worried that what if it does? That's the worry. I'm a big warrior. Mm -hmm. What if I do start weaning myself off the pills? Then I finally come off the pills and then I feel shit again. Then I've got to go back to the doctor, get prescribed more, go, start again. When I, at the moment, I'm in a, I feel like I'm in a good place. But then again, you might be right. I might experience more in life, mm -hmm. weaning myself off him and just being me. Yeah. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel down. Yeah. And if you do wean yourself off them, you do start feeling a lot more struggling pain in life, just go back on them. Mm. But... Oh, no, so you, I try. you don't know until you try, brother. And that's the beautiful thing. Like you've got a lot of big things coming up and yeah. to be taking a medication for eight to ten years, I don't know what that kind of stuff does to your liver, your kidneys or whatever it is. Mm. But for me it numbs you down from reality. Maybe your family members and friends like you on it because it kinda calms you down and suppresses all the shit that you went through back in the day. But oh I, I genuinely do believe people can change the way they think and feel that mm. I genuinely do. It's not as if or borderline fucking one flew of the cuckoo's nest that like, yeah it is Johnny because yeah, yeah because I get crazy thoughts I just don't act on them to go mm. back to mold ways because sometimes you feel the self doubt creeps in and you go ah nah I'm not good enough like I'm, yeah. who am I pretending but again over the last three four years being clean and being off everything and thinking differently and that's amazing out man, last night thank you out, out last night with everybody and everybody was drinking and I can still thing. have a good time I had a I think it was a Copperberg, non-alcoholic. Oh, yeah, I see it on your Instagram, yeah, yeah, yeah. non-alcoholic. Yeah, of course, yeah. man, because if you do that, people say, oh, you're back in the booze, this and that. Listen, if I was back in the booze, you'd just, it mm, is what it is. Fair you know what I mean? amazing, amazing. Just, you can still go out and socialise. It's just, a, I've got a cut-off point. People start getting rowdy and I just smoke bomb. Oh, yeah, 100%, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be exactly the same. How was the booze and the gear when you were on the medication? Like, how does that affect that? Your depression the next day? <laughs> Fucked me bad because i'll take because obviously you're not meant to drink alcohol when you're taking antidepressants but yeah i was you're definitely not meant to sniff cocaine when you're trying to get you just you shouldn't do it anyway 
because it's just it's the devil it's the devil's dandruff I call it because every time I took it something bad would happen or I'd think bad shit get paranoid get anxiety my depression would go through the roof especially mm. the next couple of days after that you know being a horrible cunt to my mum and my dad leave me alone do what I fucking want blah 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 I was like I'd go missing two three days at 23 24 years old turn my phone off but I'd be in like someone's flat or like I'd, stay, I'd be in like a hotel somewhere and, you know I was, I was an idiot man yeah well, could... but we all have been bro we all have yeah. been like we've all done it majority of people have done it majority of people listening are watching we've all done it some people are still doing it the friends I know back in the day are still doing it like it's down to them what they want to do with their life but for me looking at it now when you start becoming a bit more healthier and a bit more wiser you start to think why why would I want to sit and put something up my nose that I don't know what's mixed with yeah. why would I want to be sitting drinking destroying myself not seeing my kids not providing for the family to sit in a gaff with fucking five sweaty ass men couple of buds like talking the same shit listening to the same music it's just a vicious cycle it goes round and round and round and there's nothing positive ever comes out of it no I could agree with you more mate and uh, it's just negative shit and I just yeah, even think about it now having flashbacks of the shit I used to do it's just it makes you feel sick physically sick mm -hmm. it's horrible man that I used to I, I used to do shit like that but I did it and I can look back and go I'm never doing that again yeah. because that is <clears throat> especially now where I am now that's not me no I don't take drugs anymore I, you know I <laughs> occasionally like have a beer at dinner but that's that's for me that's like all right that's not the old me obviously i know you don't drink anymore you're sober but i can have like like for example when i go for like an indian dinner i like a, i like a beer with my indian mm -hmm. or chinese but it's one or two that's my that's it cut off point but the old me would be one beer two beer bag of gear. packet of gear yeah because that I'll just get that. I need. I need. A, I need something. But that's not me anymore. I don't do that shit. Mm -hmm. It's hard though, because we spoke about that last week. I asked mm. you if you, if you had a drink, and you says no. I yeah. says don't like you, me. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. And that is yeah. fine. But men like myself, I, I can't speak for everybody, but mm. I see a lot of resemblance in you when you talk about your past. Yeah, there's always that temptation. Always that temp temptation. I'm okay. I'm strong enough. That one beer, like you say, turns into two, and before you know it, you're sitting back in that random gaff with a bag of gear. Yeah. And you're, you, and then the depression comes over because you get older. And I know you've got a daughter, which we'll touch on, and your missus who worries that like, it's what we put everybody else through mm. for our actions because you selfish, become so fucking selfish. And selfish. It, I don't think give a fuck. I genuinely don't give a fuck. Right? Part of it, I'm just more responsible now, but part of me doesn't still give a fuck because. People's always going to have an opinion on your life. People's always going to say something. People's always, no matter how well you do, you get more haters with it. You get more fucking shit. But outside noises are relevant. Yeah. But only person that stops me, stops you, is me or me. Uh, you. Like, it's down to the individual where you want to go in life and what you want to create. Yeah. If you want to take a line of gear, it's down to you. Nobody's fault. It's not because you fell out your missus. It's not because you've been kicked out of the house. It's not because you've lost your job. You're choosing that action because mm. there's people out there with more than you with less than you that fucking don't put gear up their nose do you know what I mean a lot of people there's a lot of self doubt but there's a lot of, so much self sabotage out there with everybody because yeah. they think not gear and alcohol was cool you ain't cool you're a mug yeah you're an absolute mug yeah no you hit there do you know what I mean that's yeah, difficult you, that 100% mate when you rise of the foot soldier was a big film for you the I don't know if it was the third one yeah. The veranda scene where yeah. the big man's sitting there, he's got the pitch the, the notes out with the queen on it. One it went viral. Two and, yeah. Three prostitute. Yeah. I can't do five prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> but that went viral. Like how yeah. is that for you as an actor when clips like that you're appearing in then go worldwide? Because it is a mad scene. And that clip you see I see a lot myself in that fucking clip because that's the way I probably used to act <laughs> yeah. a few years ago. Well, you could do five brasses yeah, in one easy, night. Mate, oh, fucking fuck amateur. That, no chance, no. <laughs> um yeah, that was that was a mad scene. Yeah, I did that with my mate Craig Fairbrass. That was Rise of the Foot Soldier Free, the Pat Tate story. So it's all about the, the Pat Tate character, the old Essex gangster who got killed in a Range Rover in Rettington, nineteen ninety nine, maybe. I could be wrong, whatever. Um but that was it was a story about his life. 
And yeah, but we were just on this balcony scene and um, I think this was a bit more for the audience really. But um, yeah, that we, it was it was all improvisation. You know, there was uh, there was no script at this point. At this, but there was a script, but it was that scene wasn't working. And um, uh, the producer and you love day basically came out with um, uh, a big you know, from the uh, makeup, not makeup department, from uh, what they're called. I don't know from a department that had all like the fake gear and stuff. Mm -hmm. Put it on the table, um, gave them some notes, and just said, "Right, you two, just go for it." I was like, well, what should we fucking do? And Craig was like, why don't, I, why don't you come out, I'm sniffing gear, and you just go, what are you doing? And we just see what happens. It's all right. And then that scene came out of it. And it went fucking viral when the film came out. And I remember someone saying, fucking hell, I've been, I'm in fucking America and I've been sent it on my iPhone. Like, look how funny this is. Like, it's Josh, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it still went, goes viral at like, what are we doing? Like people put on their TikToks, what are we doing Christmas? One positive shoot, two <laughs> positive shoot. You know, I yeah. can't be fucking if I, you know, or, you know, what we do when lockdown's over. It came out again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was, that was fucking fun, man. I loved it. Brilliant. How was that for your profile for acting? Like being in a film and you had a good part in that as well. Yeah, like, I had quite a big role in that So one. how was that feeling for you? Like, was that probably your biggest role till to, then? To, to then, 100%, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably still now. That's that like, that's like everyone says, um, you know, Foot Soldier Free, the, you know, was a really good one. They loved it. I get, I get, I still get people telling me like, like they love my character, Kenny Boy, Ken. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because obviously in that bit, he's like, Ken, I love you, but you're driving me fucking mad, you cunt, when he throws the gear in my face, whatever. Um, so yeah, I get so many DMs saying, you know, are they, when are they, are they ever going to do a film about Ken? Are they going to do a film about Kenny Boy? And I'm just like, I don't know, maybe, hopefully one day, you never know. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be cool to show how he meets the boys. Yeah. So yeah, who knows? You never know, brother. You never, you know. never know. What was it like working with Tom Hardy on the craze? So I worked with uh, on the oh yeah, his film Legend. So I did work with him. They cut my scene out though, which Fuckers. was fucking annoying. Um, it hit the editing floor. Um, but just, but regardless of that, I've got to work with him. That was cool, man. He's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with him on the film Legend where he played he, play, he played both of them he played yeah. Ronnie and Reggie which was mad to be on set because they'd have him come on set doing his thing and then hold like this ball and be like that's the other character to talk to each other and it's like what the fuck it was, it was mad but he's a lovely guy absolutely one of the biggest actors in the world at the moment he's you know he's fucking Venom for God's sake mm -hmm. so yeah it was unbelievable to work with him and I learned from him nice guy proper nice guy Phenomenal actor. Phenomenal actor. One of the best. What's it like going to a scene then? If if you get anxiety, do you overthink or do you feel more at home being somebody else? I f this is the maddest thing. So when I get picked up in like a car to go and do like, um, to go and uh, be on a film set, shit myself. Nervous as fuck. Still getting now. You know, even when I come to Sleb or May, driving, listening to my music, pumped up, ready to train, but I've still got the anxiety, nervousness. But the minute I'm in the gym, all goes away. The minute I'm on a film set, gone. It's crazy. Don't know, I don't know what it is, my, my anxiety plays up. Is that because you're maybe living in the present moment where... I don't know what's going to happen. in tune and you're being away from who you think you are? What do you feel about yourself, Josh? What now? Yeah. Um, I feel I I do feel very happy. I, I feel like I'm in a good place mentally, mentally and physically right now. At right now, Josh, right now, mentally and physically, I've been the best I've ever been ever been my whole life, mm -hmm. and that's a big thing for me to say. Because I know you've got a masseuse who cares for you and's always mm. keeping you on your toes and making sure you're okay. That like, yeah, we'll touch on your daughter. How old is your daughter? Uh, my Lily May is four. Beautiful name, like, yeah. but she's got a rare disease, is that correct? Yeah, unfortunately, um, my baby girl was born without any sight, so she can't see. She's She was born blind. So that fucked me when we found that out. Why? Just destroyed me, man, because I found out my daughter can't see. She's blind. Um, just fucked my depression. Um, it's hard, man. But she's such a happy kid. She's so amazing. Like she's the best thing that ever happened to me. 
Um, but yeah, it's hard, man. You know, bringing up a kid who's blind who can't see my face, um, can't see my missus' face. It's, it's a struggle, man. And I get my down days, but I look at her, who's singing along, happy. Um, but, you know, I suppose the one thing that is all right about this is that she wasn't born with sight and then lost it. She was born without sight. So she doesn't know no different. But it destroys me, man. Every time I see her, kills me. Absolutely well, destroys me. The only thing a father can do is be there. And I'm there. Exactly. So you've got to be proud of yourself when you're owning it. Like, I understand that. But like you say, it's not as if her sight's been took away. Mm. She was born with something that she would not know the difference. And you never know what's, what new technologies now doctors bring out and all the scientists yeah. that in the future, like people getting fucking brain operations and new brains and new eyes I've seen as well like you yeah. just don't know what t new technology and hopefully one day that like, your baby daughter will see but the best thing a father can do is just be there to support and love and care that like, when that happened at the start what, what age did you find out that like, was it before birth or was it when she was born uh when she was born mm -hmm. I found out yeah so that 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 broke me did you go and self-destruct yeah drink drugs again everything and that's the worst thing you can do. Because mm. as a father, your kids need you there. I was a fucker, mate. Me and my missus, we broke up because of me. Nothing to do with her. I was... Just how, just how I dealt with it, James. I didn't know what to do. Just I was just gutted that, you know, I've I, I brought a baby into the world and she can't see. Is it my fault? What have I, what, why? 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 You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't really understand. Like, I just couldn't get it. I was just like looking up. Like, why the fuck have I got a kid who's blind? Not like a bad thing, but like, it just killed me, man. It still kills me now. Even talking about it, like, have you ever spoke to anybody about that? Because obviously, he says the last five years. Maybe that's. Did you start when your missus fell pregnant? Seeing a psychiatrist. Um. Yeah. Why? Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have stopped. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have stopped, but I did because I'm an idiot. I don't know why I stopped. To be fair. Yeah, you don't need to put yourself down, bro. You're still here. You're still fighting. You're still a family man. You're still doing what you can to make a crust to provide for your family, and that's all anybody can ask of a father. Like, yeah. You've not walked away. That some coward dads do. Like I was in my, out my kids' lives for many years at the start. I believe now I'm a father. I believe now that I provide. I believe now that I'm there if they need me. Amazing. I'm not selfish anymore. That that is my first. First of all, you got to make sure you're selfish, right? And then after that, if you can provide for them and be there for them when need be, then for me, you're doing your job. Mm. If you say you're going to get them at a certain day and a certain time and get them, you're doing your job. For yeah. You providing and taking them and making them happy and smile. You're yeah. doing your job. If your daughter's smiling, you're already winning. Mate, smiling. She don't stop smiling, laughing, singing. Singing's her thing. My daughter's got the most amazing voice. You know, it's and it's unbelievable. But you know, but the last I'd say the last year I've been so happy because I see how happy she is. And you know, you know, my girlfriend says, my girlfriend Charlotte says to me she's so happy we need to be happy around her she picks up these vibes because she can't see us but she's so clever and she's just so amazing but obviously yeah she just can't see see me but obviously like even like the other night i was just looking at her just thinking oh you know what because the the, the doctors have said that she was born in the right era in her lifetime she will be able to see you know i pray that there's such good technology out there that we will, we will be able to help her. That's all we need is hope. Yeah. That's all hope, we need yeah. Is hope. So, see, as much as it destroys me, I just stay strong, mate. That's all I can do. I've got to, man, because there's kids out there with everything at four year old and they're little fuckers. Yeah. Little fuckers. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're having maybe your kid born blind has maybe made you see the world a bit differently and maybe <sighs> Massively. getting. And it's calm me, can't. Not obviously, obviously, I went on self destruct when I found out, but I mean, I'm the calmest. I've ever been my whole life and now it's taken me 35 years to get there. I mean, as in calm as in like, I'll be driving because I can be an aggressive person 
but you know, I'm not like I am in my films. I'm a soft cunt, you know. But but I've got that rage in me, as you may do as well. I could be driving, some cunt would beat me. I fucking get out of my car, turn around, it's an old woman. I'm oh, sorry, you were just the red light and it went green. Oh, what am I doing getting out of the car? Some cunt beats me now. I'm like, oh shit, I'm so so sorry. Just little things. I've calmed down massively, James, massively, and. You know, like, even even now, talking about my daughter, like, I can't wait to go home and see my baby. Pick her up, cuddle her, just give her a kiss. When I say it's daddy, she goes mad. She goes, mm -hmm. she goes crazy, man. It's just the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Yeah, man. Like I say, man, like many men walk away from kids. Mm. Oh, that's mate. not That's a cowardly thing to do. If you've, if you've made nah. a kid, you must be there and put your work in. If you don't get all your partner... It happens all the time. I know they can be ruthless, some women, towards men when it comes to kids, but then some men are ruthless towards women when it comes to kids. It works both ways. But if you become, whether you have to go through courts for six months, 12 months, 18 months, sometimes it takes years mm -hmm. to even see a kid for a day. Like, just stick by it. Like, yeah. Because a bond from a kid is everything in this planet. Like, if yeah. anything ever happens to your kids and you're not there, man, I couldn't live with that pain. Like, mm. It's just difficult as a father, but I just know I'm in a good place. I know I'm in a better place. I know where I'm going to go in life. I know what I can provide. I know I can help people. And that's all I can. Even people listening to your story are going, fuck me, that's deep. It's personal. Yeah. This is where people get their knowledge of yeah. life and not giving up. Because and I think, I think as well, a lot of people are going to be like, wow. I'm not, I mean, it just goes to show you don't know what people are going through. Because mm -hmm. you don't. No one knows that. I don't go, obviously, yeah, my per in my personal life, my close friends and my family know what mm -hmm. I go through, but. Now everyone's going to know, and I want them to. And, you know, talking about mental health is a big thing for me, especially, you know, in men. I think we need to talk about it more. Yeah. So how does your daughter get round the house and stuff? Like, is there certain things that she knows what things are now? She, like this is what I'm talking about. She's just amazing. Her senses are incredible. <laughs> like, she's got, she she because it's all sensory toys, and she loves playing with stuff like that. So yeah. she, you know, she'll say, oh, I want to stand up and, we just put her, put her down, she walks around and like, she'll be walking towards the wall and then she'll just do that and then she'll turn around and walk back. I say, come to daddy, here's my voice, keeps coming over, keeps coming over. So she's just amazing, she's just an amazing kid. She's the best thing that ever happened to me and I love her. I'll do anything for that kid. Where do you think you'd be if you never had a daughter right now? Hmm. Really? Mm. Probably. I'd, 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 I think I'd be the guy back to the old me. If I'm honest. Drinking, doing drugs. Which is not good, but to so say it. Yeah, so everything happens for a reason, brother. Mm. Kids are a gift. Listen, let's be honest, a lot of fuckers as well, but yeah, I'm not going to do shit. I don't get me wrong, no. the kids are great. This and yeah. that. Listen, I'm a good dad now, but I, I still feel you, as yeah. if fucking shut up, like fucking hell, man, like yeah. take a break, like yeah, yeah. the little fuckers, like my yeah. son and daughter fight, like fuck, yeah. Part of me sits there and laughs and go, I love this, and then other times, if I'm in a bad mood, it's how I react and I go, shut the fucking hell, man, like yeah, calm yeah. down. But I don't get me wrong, she can have a paddy. Yeah, like, if you don't get her right, like if she shot, she'll say, I want my bottle of juice, like her bottle. If she don't get it within a minute, she goes, bah, bah, yeah, yeah. she turns into the exorcist. I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> calm down. All right, daddy's yeah. here. Because yeah. bless her, she can't see. Like, she can just say it. And then I'm like, I'm making it. Obviously, uh, but you know, we kind of set things up now. So it's kind of like already made. Like, mm -hmm. She says something, boom, it's there. Yeah. Can I, daddy, can I have a biscuit? Mm -hmm. Boom, it's there. And if she don't get it within, you know, she used to have this thing with my car. I want to go, like, to go to sleep. Daddy's car. I want to go in daddy's car. No, baby, it's 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. She has trouble sleeping because of her sight. She can't uh, differentiate light and day. It's, uh, only, uh, it's only, it's funny I'm on this, but it's only the last week or so that we've managed to get her sleep pattern back. As in going to bed at eight, nine o'clock, waking up at six, seven in the morning. No, my, my girlfriend has gone through so much stuff and I've got so much respect for her as a mum. You know, being up stupid o'clock in the morning sort of stupid o'clock the next day and there's me sleeping because I'm, I'm I'm on set the next day and if I don't get sleep I'm not on that on set I can't do my job I can't get money I can't provide so proud of her 
proud of my, yeah she's she's an amazing mum probably I, I just can't tell you and Lily is twenty four hour care she can't see man yeah so it's hard what about school and stuff when she goes to school is that a separate uh, school or is it well yeah she, she'll, home she'll go schooling? no 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 she, so she's at a nursery at the moment now in near where she, near where um, they used to live we take her up there uh, in Bishop Stortford Thorley Nursery. Um, but yeah, she got two teachers who, um, who who look after her, and um, yeah, and what it's, it's just cute, man. Watching her going to the school, like they like hold her hands, and yeah, so they they're with her twenty four seven. Like literally, they don't leave her side. Um, but yeah, but she, she's gonna go to proper school in September. So we're looking at a few places at the moment, which is like a special school for her. Um, but I haven't really had a look yet. But we will. But that'd be good for her. Oh, 100%. Listen, when she's at my house, she's got all like the, um, she's got all the, um, uh, all my, she's got a big family network. You know, my mum, my dad, uh, my brother, my brother, my sister, their kids. She loves it, hearing their voices, playing with them. She, she's a good kid, man. She's got, and she's going to have an amazing life and I'm going to fucking make sure of it. Yeah, I love that, bro. Let's talk about the MMA fight we're going to do. Yeah, boy. How did you get that call uh, up, brother? I, I just got contacted by Brett, um, you know, our mutual friend who's mm. setting this whole thing up. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I said yes, man. Uh, this is f- going to be fucking amazing. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. It's getting my mental health back on track big time, training every day, um, working hard in the gym. I, feel, I mean, at the moment, right now, I feel great. You ask me how do I feel. Mm-hmm. I feel amazing. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah. yeah. That's because you've got a better purpose. You've got a better get up and go plus for exercise and everything. Yeah. We're getting through, put, through our paces from Evan and Moody, our two coaches. <laughs> yeah. Who are absolute bastards at Beasts. times, but really good guys. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's learning a new craft. I f- feel as if I can semi-box, but... Yeah, no, you are, man, day. and you're strong. You're, yeah. I, I was, I'm surprised when I first saw you. I was like, I, I, yeah, your boxing skills are on point, and you're powerful. You know, I wouldn't want to take, I wouldn't want to take a dig off you because the ground works hard, very hard. Like when once they, it just shows you how fit you got to yeah. be on MMA. Yeah, because once they're on top of you, it's your strength against my strength, and yeah. it's just like Arr. they just tie you up. Like it's unbelievable. Oh, These people can kill you. And you, every man thinks they can fight, but you can't yeah. fight shit. You're not against these <laughs> yeah. men. Yeah, if they, you're fighting a boxer, then you might have a chance. Yeah. But, but once you're fighting an MMA fighter who can box and tie a box mm-hmm. and take you to the ground, yeah. you're fucked. Our team, we've got James Locke. Yeah, my boy. Yeah, Carl Woods. Yep. Got young AJ, Tash, and Chun, who's a yeah. little fucking nutcase. A little fucking nut. Um, Chun's a dwarf. Tash was in Ibiza Weekender. Yeah. AJ, Love Island. Carl, um, I think he's done Love Island, uh, relationship with Katie Price, and Lockie, who's just a fucking big nutcase. Like, he was on only way his Essex. Like, yeah, I love him. A bunch Absolutely of kind of, I wouldn't say fucking deluded individuals, but you've kind of yeah. got to be deluded. Like, yeah. But it's, a, it's a, a great mix of people. It's yeah. a mad mix of people. It's like a fucking zoo in there. You yeah. talk about one flew over the cuckoo's <laughs> nest. If you probably come off your medication, you'd probably think you were in a fucking loony bin. <laughs> yeah, I know. That during the day. Everyone's the, fucking yeah, men, wouldn't they? Like zombies. Like, everybody's yeah. nuts. You've got people screaming. You've got people hanging from cages. People just, yee! Like, you're That's you. <laughs> 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 you're just thinking that. Like, but to get up and have a bit of purpose, it's going to be, again, another challenge, another experience. It's something that I'll... I will succeed at it's not a problem I'm thinking some kid from um, I'd be for a weekend or Callum is yeah. hard um, but again I'm a winner I don't give yeah. a fuck who I'm fighting like the Scottish have kind of got a mad mindset all we're known yeah, as well yeah. drinking and fighting I don't do one anymore um, and in fact I don't even do the other one anymore but I just love boxing I love the kind of combat side of things I ain't yeah. a professional but I just know I've got the balls to do it. I know I've yeah. got the balls to fight anyone. I'll stand down to no one. Yeah, yeah. And that's amazing. And I'll rise to the occasion. And it's just a great experience to be down here for the next 10, 11 weeks. We're going to Dubai as well. And yeah, that's going to be fun. It's uh, it's going to be a great show. It's, we've got we've got a diary room. Yeah. Um, it's going fun. to be on the telly. It's just, it's just business as well for me. It's going to enhance your profile. Of course, it's going yeah. to meet new people again. 
met yourself, brother, and people are going to be friends for life. Like. Mate, we're definitely friends for life. Yeah. I've got nothing but respect for you, and uh, I fell in love with you the moment I met you. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's good acting. He is a good actor. Yeah, uh, yeah see? Yeah. Do it. So how does your, like, your missus not feel that you're doing this? Um, she's She's got my back big time. She's. Uh, I think she's a bit anxious that I might get hurt, my, and my mum is as well. But you know what? It is what it is. It takes a man to step in that cage, and I'm ready to rock and roll. How's your mum in that scene? That what? What I'm doing? Yeah. Um, she's not happy with it. Oh, oh what, yeah. What if my baby gets hurt? What if he knocks you out? I was like, it's not gonna happen, mum. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna happen. Tell me your plans for the future, Joshy boy. Uh, I wanna continue with my acting. I'm still not at the stage where I want to get to yet, but the thing is with me, I never give up. I mean, look how long I've been doing it. I will never give up. I'm only 35, you know, even when I'm 50 years old, I'll still be, I'll still be working. I'll always be doing something, but I'll never give up my acting until I live my dream. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to do. How hard does acting for people watching this maybe want to be an actor or get involved in drama? Like, how yeah. difficult is it? Because I've done a bit extra work, I've done a bit of acting. And you're talking 3 a.m. calls, 4 a.m. calls, you're standing there for yeah. sometimes 16 hours. Like, doing nothing. Doing fuck all. Until you get called and, you, and you're done and you walk yeah. on and you fucking well, go. That is a difficult gig, but... It is a difficult game, um, but I, I think if you really, really, truly want to be an actor, um, you've never done it before, I'd, my only advice to you is go to drama school and learn your craft. Learn it every fucking day. Read about it, watch films, reenact scenes, learn scripts. Just do what you can. If you really want to do it, you'll do it. It's as simple as that. Who's your favourite actor? Daniel Day-Lewis. Not because he mentioned, but I even the other day I watched The Gangs in New York again. Yeah. I'm just like, well, this guy is just fucking ridiculous. But DiCaprio's up there as well. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. But you said he's my favourite. Yeah. But again, that's a great film. Three hour film, over three hours. That. I love films like that. Who would you like to work with? Um... Well, obviously, Daniel Day-Lewis, because I know I'd learn stupid amounts. Again, I'd love to work with Leonardo DiCaprio. I'd love to work with Tom Hardy again. I'd say, honestly, Tom Hanks for me. If you pick any film in the world that you'd have loved to be involved in, what would it have been? Green Mile. John Coffey? Yeah. Like would the drink. Who would you have played the screw? I would have, play, I would have played, I would, do you know what I would have played? The guy Wild Bill, bits chocolate and people. Yeah, like. Wild Bill, and stumps in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. He's a bastard. Tim. I know. I could play that. I break my heart every time I still watch that film. Mate, I cry. I've seen that film so many times, and every time I cry, I think, "Why the fuck did you yeah. kill that geezer? Put him in a chair. You shook his hand. You got a flashback, knowing he didn't kill, uh, murder those two girls. Wild Bill done it. The character I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and you've seen everything he done. It annoyed me so much, yeah. but you know, it's a film, it's a script, and that was that. That's what's bringing it to real life and, and bringing that emotion out in people. Yeah. You touch on Lee, Mullet, Lee Murray, who's in prison in Morocco to now, who's involved yeah. in one of the biggest heists. Yeah. You say you look like him, there is a resemblance. Like, if they make his film, it's going to be, a, I'd imagine, a mega success. He was a great yeah. fighter, fought in the UFC. Yeah. And like I say, involved in one of the biggest heists. Like, yeah. Do you think that's a possibility that he could play his part in the future? I mean, if anybody's watching and they're making a film or thinking about making a film about Lee Murray, please keep me in mind because even when I was a young young kid, you know, in my 20s going to strip clubs, the doorman who used to like roll around with Lee Murray or do whatever would say, fuck me, you know who you look like? And I'd say, what? they say, you look like a little Lee Murray. And I'd be like, at the time, who's that? And then I found out he was top cage fighter for Anderson Silva and then I still get told now I even got told the other day by someone it's like bloody hell you know who you look like especially when I had short spiky hair not my hair like this I look at him and everyone's like you look at the image of him even people that I know now I won't mention but who actually trained with him they're like mate you're, you are Lee you look at the image of him so I was like oh sweet alright so fingers crossed I mean they, they probably get some big alias actor to play him but I would love to play it because I do the fighting. I know how to fight. Uh, yeah, so that that'd be a massive role for me. Can you imagine me playing Lee Murray? And do, it'd just be a great, it'd just be a great film because what he's done. Mm -hmm. I really hope he comes out. How much does that medic the medication affect your acting? Do you not even know anymore whether you're up or down? Because I noticed it straight away as soon as I talked to you. I said yeah. you on something. Yeah, you did. Yeah, straight away. I know. Yeah, and it's not to be. Sometimes well, I'm, I'm so happy. Positive, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Six o'clock, Josh. Fuck yeah. off. 
And I was like, ah. so, and then you opened up and then said straight away, yeah. no yeah. fucking about, you were honest about it. Of course, why well, wouldn't I be? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That like, for um, anybody watching Josh, that's maybe going through their struggles, maybe gets anxiety, sleeping or overthinks and they don't want to be here or whatever, like, yeah. what advice would you have for them? I would say, never, never be afraid to talk to someone. Please always open up and tell your loved ones, your friends, your family, anything. Especially, in, you know, I know, I know women. You know, I'm not saying not just women as well, but mainly men, guys. Please open up and talk to someone. If you're feeling down, you're feeling depressed, you don't think you can get through life. You you can. If if, if I know I, I I've I've gone through stuff, but not as bad as other people who are probably watching this, who might think, oh, you're going through nothing compared to what I've been through. You've had a good life, but. We all suffer differently with our depressions. One thing I'll say is never be afraid to talk. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Would you like to finish up on anything, my brother? Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And thanks for making me cry, you prick. Yeah, I told you I would. <laughs> thank listen, you Josh, so much, Love man. you, man. I, thank, I can't believe Thank you so much for letting me come on the show. Not a problem. Listen, you're a good guy. I have nothing but respect for you. Kicking thank on you. and achieving what you want to achieve. And we've got big plans for the future. But we should yep. fucking knuckle down and, try, and go and achieve those dreams that... Your mother will be watching us, proud of you. you. You're a great dad, great friend, and like I say, I'm happier in my life, my brother. Me too, bro. Thank God you, bless brother. you. Love you, my man. Yeah, God bless.